All right. Let's go a little bit quicker here. Resistance training. Um, so this is when we're using weight or body weights to improve. Again, we can choose strength, power, or LME. I think the easiest way to think about is strength is high weight, low reps. Muscular power is that bit in the middle, but we need that fast contraction because it's an explosive movement. And local muscular endurance is lightweight and lots of rep because we need to get our muscles under fatigue. Um, with muscular power, we've been taught about this 36 rule. Um, if anyone are, are Collingwood supporters, we know Dane Swan used to wear number 36. He was a powerful athlete. I think it makes it easy to, to get the prescription for muscular power. We want the load to be in the 30 to 60% one RM. We want reps to be three to six sets, three to six rest between sets, three to six. Um, so the 36 rule suits pretty well for power. Um, and this is for the guidelines from, um, what's that book called? Stoppy, some American um, uh, sports medicine book that medicine book. seem to be using. Yeah. Um, so we're pre pretty confident um, of those ones. Man, more rest we need to replenish PC stores and make sure we can do quality sets for LME, less rest because we want those muscles to be fatigued. Um Here's a question just of interest. Just before you move on there, Willie, the three to six or 36 rule, um, it's interesting. The reps, three to six, uh, not 10. So one thing we do know is we learned this from last year, that they won't accept anything more than 10 for plyometrics and power. Yeah. They start to say anything more than 10 is LME. And yet there are books out there that say to train power, you need to be at, six to 12, all right? So even if you're not comfortable doing three to six reps, and we've been told by an assessor that that will be accepted, um, but if you're not, um, then don't go past 10. Start at six, and if you need to overload, go to seven. Yeah, beautiful. Um, just worth looking at this question um, for one. Choose one skill from these frequency tables and draw or explain a resistance training exercise. Um, so I thought this was a pretty interesting question. Sometimes you'll get these boxes in VCAR questions. I haven't really drawn it very well, but this was a, a, a box that you could do a drawing in. And my advice to you, if you get a chance to do a drawing, do it. It's much harder to mark a draw, drawing wrong than it is words. So for this question, you have to choose one of these skills. For sure, for me, these chest pass or overhead pass would be the skill I would have gone with. And then you had to link it to a resistance training program. So if we're going chest, you could have done a bench press. Are uh, you going overhead? You could have done tricep extension, shoulder, lat pull down, any of those type of things. And then if you could do a drawing, even better. Um, and the best way to train for weightlifting is going to be that resistance. All right, let's get into plyometrics because this one's really um, – People struggle with it. This plyometric training is um, only a muscular power training method, um, and it's probably the most effective to improve muscular power quickly. Then we've got this myotic stretch reflex, or it's called otherwise known as the stretch shortening reflex. What it is, um, it's basically, you probably would have seen in those movies where uh, you get a hammer to your knee if you had a doctor surgery, a hammer to your knee, and then you'll have that reflex of your leg extending. What's that hammer to the knee is doing? He's telling the brain that your uh, muscle is now overstretching. So you, you need to um, contract to make that stop happening. That is the stretch shortening reflex. So with these plyometric exercises, we have an eccentric contraction, so a muscle lengthening contraction, followed by this forceful and quick um, concentric contraction or muscle shortening contraction. Um, how VK often come at, at plyometrics is because of this really high forces that are put through the body, um, there are injury risks. So you need to do things like make sure you've got an adequate training base, make sure that you've done a good warm up, make sure the um, footwear is appropriate and these sort of random things to make sure that you don't hurt yourself. Um, a golden rule with plyometrics is you can't do it more than twice per week. Um, intensity, I think RPE is probably a really good intensity to use and it's got to be max intensities. 
And we want to have these lower, um, you know, for only four to five exercises, really, no more than 10 reps um, and three sets with lots of rest in between sets. Um, just to explain this, um, my or stretch shortening cycle a little bit more. So this is a plyometric, this is called a depth jump. And as you can see in this second photo, through this phase, she has muscle lengthening through the calf here, which is an eccentric contraction. And there'd be some muscle lengthening here through the, the quadricep and the um, glute. So this would be your eccentric contraction. You guys know if you're doing the vert jump test, you want to get down nice and low to get this really long eccentric contraction. So this is how it starts. And then during this upward phrase, she would have had this concentric contraction through the calves and the quads in order to have to produce this really big force. So PNF is going to work um, through here. So I should have mentioned that through here, the brain's about to go, hang on a second, we're lengthening a little bit too much. Let's stop that from happening now and make sure that our muscles do this contraction. So you're going to get um, not only these muscular um, adaptations, but also these nerve adaptations. So you'll get this neuromuscular adaptations, hence why it's called PNF. Um, you'll get both, which is why it's such a good training method. Um, we're running out of time for you guys to do many of these, but we'll just go through type of training. That's pretty obvious now. Um, it's muscular power and the stretch shortening cycle. This one is a really common SAC question, exam question. The stretch is the eccentric contraction. The shortening is the concentric contraction. So for your answer for this one, we needed a <coughs> forceful eccentric contraction immediately followed by or immediate before this shortening phase of the action. So this was really poorly answered four years ago. I don't think we've heard much on this particular um, concept since. So again, I think it's one of those that's due to come up at this year, perhaps. Um. Now, again, so I'm, I'm rushing through this because you guys probably want to get to bed. We're a little bit later than usual tonight. But this was last year's question where you had to give a plyometric exercise. <coughs> What's really important for you guys to understand is a plyometric exercise, you basically have to leave the ground or you have to throw something. All right. A sit-up, no matter how quickly you do it, is not plyometrics. A push-up just a normal push-up, even if you do it quick, is not plyometrics. If you leave the ground by doing a clap push-up, beautiful, plyometrics. If you um, do a jump squat, that's plyometrics because we've left the ground. We've had an eccentric contraction followed by a concentric contraction. So here you have to actually name the plyometric exercise. So box jumps, medicine ball slams, um, jump squats, clap push-ups, all of those would have been okay, but you'd be really surprised how many people just put random activities like bench press. Bench press is not plyometrics. You have to leave the ground or throw something for it to be definitely.